So many of our coastal salt marshes are drowning. Sea level rise is accelerating, and the marshes are getting excessively inundated with water from storms. Just look at this red-orange area in here. If we don't do something soon, we're gonna lose them all. Wow, Bill is right. The erosion there is a real problem. Those marshes are important for those communities, and they're important nurseries for marine species, including certain sharks. Thankfully, the Nature Conservancy is doing something to protect and restore these marshes, which sharks rely on. These are critically important habitat for both wildlife and people. We really can't afford to lose them. I think we need to understand more about the sharks that inhabit those salt marsh habitats. That way, we can adjust our conservation plans to better support them. I wonder who could help us with that. Ahoy, Dr. Dunton. I can help you. Great, I'm coming with you. Tell everyone I'm going fishing. We're not talking about fishing, Bill. We're talking about sharking. They're not warm and fuzzy creatures. I beg to differ. Forget about needing a bigger boat. For these sharks, we don't need any boat at all. You're right, these shark species can be found in the estuary right off the marsh. Their pups grow up hiding and feeding before they swim out to the Atlantic in the fall. Feeding on what? Crabs, worms, small fish. One fish species called menhaden is a favorite for many sharks. And menhaden have a big comeback thanks to conservation efforts, so there are lots of them for sharks to eat. Should we be afraid? These species are not man-eaters, and we have coexisted with them for hundreds of years, so the risk is pretty low. In fact, falling coconuts, lightning strikes, flying champagne corks, and many other things are statistically deadlier than sharks of any type. Oh. That sandbar shark. A what? It must be 20 feet long. Actually, it's about six feet long and over 100 pounds. So what are we doing now? We're quitting, right? No, we'll tag this shark with an acoustic transmitter so we can monitor her movements in the waters off of New Jersey salt marshes and along the Atlantic coast. She can't go underwater with that tag in her. I tell you, she can't. Of course she can. These tags provide valuable data for up to 10 years, tracking her movements. Excellent. With that information, the Nature Conservancy can determine what kind of conservation actions we can take so that sharks and other marine species can survive into the future. Well, a world without sharks is a lot scarier than a world with them. Sh shark! Shark in the marsh! Shark in the estuary! Now that is good news. Though Hollywood portrays sharks as villains, their reality is actually much scarier than ours. The average annual tally for fatal shark attacks across the entire world is fewer than 10. But globally, 100 million sharks perish every year, harvested by people for parts or as unintended fishing bycatch. New Jersey salt marsh habitats are critical nursery grounds for sandbar sharks, sand tiger sharks, and smooth dogfish, which play an important role in natural marsh function and the balance of life in New Jersey's coastal estuaries and in the food web of the Atlantic Ocean. But coastal marshes are under a lot of stress from climate change related impacts, like accelerated sea level rise and stronger, more frequent storms. About 70,000 of the 200,000 acres of salt marshes in New Jersey are degraded. Some are eroding annually by 19 inches, equating to a loss of 4,000 acres of salt marsh every decade. 
The Nature Conservancy is working toward large-scale positive change in how salt marshes are restored and maintained in New Jersey. With focus on an innovative technique that uses sediment dredged from clogged boat channels to give marsh grasses a boost of elevation and a foothold to revegetate. Healthy, naturally functioning marshes means sharks and all the other wildlife that rely on their resources can persist into the future. Please help us help them. Help us help them.